Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now let's say you bought a graphics card brand new and installed the first version of the drivers available for that hardware, either from your chosen brand's website or from the included driver CD. Let's then assume that you never updated those drivers for whatever reason that may be. Just what sort of performance differences could you expect in games? Now there were a few variables to consider when putting this video together. I thought the most fun way to approach this would be to ignore most of them. This is the RX 460 and it's been available since mid 2016. Since then it's received many driver updates and it's still supported at the time of this video, making it a tempting entry level choice. It's worth remembering that some games tested today were released before this card and some games were released after, but all of them are updated to their respective latest latest versions and may perform differently than they would have at launch thanks to various patches. Furthermore, most of you who own a 460 probably don't have the original drivers installed, even if you bought it brand new. With everything to consider then, I opted to tackle this from a simple standpoint, the perspective of a user who bought this card in August 2016, installed the available drivers from the software CD or website, and then never typed the phrase AMD drivers into the Google search bar ever again, like some sort of maniac. It's a plausible scenario, but to be honest, it's more about addressing a curiosity of mine. Now, unlike graphics card software, most games these days will require an update before they start. So even if you have ancient GPU drivers, you've probably got an up-to-date game. So let the fun begin. So in the games that didn't have built-in benchmark runs, like Fallout 4 here for example, I just tried to replicate the same scenario twice. As you can see here, I took a trip through Concord with the latest 21.8.2 driver version from AMD, and then I compared it to the first version available, which is 16.8.1. I think there was a slightly earlier revision available to reviewers, but I believe 16.8.1 was the first available um, to the public when this card released in August 2016. Now, if there are any significant differences, we should be able to notice that with the frame rate anyway, despite any small differences between the two benchmark runs. In games that did have a built-in benchmark run, well, I just used those and then overlaid a different bit of footage that was more interesting. But as you can see, Fallout 4 runs with 48 frames per second on the latest recommended 21.8.2 drivers with decent percentile figures as well. So let's switch to the first iteration of AMD's RX 460 drivers and see how performance is impacted. So here we are in Concord once again, and to be honest, the frame rate is pretty much the same. There is no significant difference here. In fact, the average frame rate was exactly the same. The 1% low was pretty much identical, and there was only a small difference between the 0.1% figure as well, which could all come down to a simple margin of error, to be honest. Now, in terms of the VRAM usage differences between the two drivers here, well, I've got to say that the latest drivers 21.8.2 do use a lot more VRAM so I'm guessing that it utilizes the card's power a lot better we're using about 2.8 gigs with the 21.8.2 drivers and when it comes to the 16.8.1 drivers we're only using around six gi uh, six gigs yeah it doesn't even have six gigs two gigs in the same area so yeah not a, no difference in performance though to start with so in GTA 5 with 21.8.2, the average frame rate was 73 and the 1.1% lows were also decent. The game doesn't often drop below 60 FPS to be honest, even in busy downtown areas. And that is no exception with the RX 460, even with the high settings, although MSAA was disabled because that can create some pretty big frame dips, even when it's turned on um, and set to x2 if you turn it up any higher than that then you're going to see some pretty chuggy frame rates in busier downtown areas of the game but overall the performance was pretty decent or is still pretty decent with the rx 460 in 2021 and you're not going to have a problem providing you don't try and crank all of the settings up to their respective highest now if we move on to the original amd drivers for this card 16.8.1 yet again then the average was actually uh, slightly better. Now both of these benchmarks were taken using the in-game 
benchmark run that's uh, included with GTA 5 and the footage here I've used is just me driving towards downtown because I thought it was more interesting than looking at the same benchmark footage you've probably seen a million times everywhere else so yeah the average was a bit better with 16.8.1 drivers the 1% low was about the same but overall the latest drivers did mean that the game was far more stable and with version 16.8.1 I did encounter a random black screen uh, that could only be resolved by switching my whole system off so yeah that's worth bearing in mind too. Now retire has to be one of the most demanding areas in Kingdom Come Deliverance so this is where I decided to uh, first conduct my gameplay test. Again no built in gameplay benchmark or I should just say benchmark with this game so I just sort of, sort of tried to do the same thing, take a walk through the town of Rattar here, see what happened in terms of the frame rate. Things remained pretty smooth, I'll admit, with an average of 41 frames per second. Now anything other than ultra settings or the very high settings with this card is going to perform with at least 30 frames per second and the 1% low isn't going to be too bad either. I was actually quite surprised to be honest with the RX 460 given that this game can be quite intensive but generally only with the uh, highest settings. I've, I've made a video a couple of videos ago regarding this game and it's pure contempt for most cards at ultra settings. Moving on then and here we are again, the middle of Rattai. You might notice once again that the uh, VRAM usage was a lot lower. This time around we're probably using about a gigabyte less VRAM with the 16.8.1 drivers and all I can assume is that the card isn't being utilised or the memory isn't being utilised as well. Um, this translates to a slightly average or a slightly lower average frame rate of 37 here so we are losing 4 or 5 frames as far as an average is concerned and the 1% low is a little worse as well. Although that 0.1% low read as 11, it wasn't much better with the previous modern drivers because that was only 13. So you're going to get a little bit of stutter here and there either way. Now Microsoft Flight Simulator is probably the newest game that I tested today. With the latest recommended drivers, we were seeing 38 frames per second, a 1% low of 35 and a 0.1% low of 17, which occurred anyway, regardless of the driver version. I was using. Um, this is sort of as the game was loading up, I believe, as I first took flight over, I think it was Brighton here in this video. Yeah, there was a small little bit of stutter, uh, sort of going over Brighton Pier for whatever reason, but that occurs with all the hardware I test, to be fair. It's just Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's very demanding. But aside from that, it has received a performance update recently, which has made it far more lenient with older and weaker hardware and as such our average was pretty decent at 38 frames per second with a 1% low of 35. Switching to the older drivers once again and I didn't think it would start but 36 frames per second was the average so a little bit lower and we've also got a slightly lower 1% low as well but either way both instances I would call very playable at least um, as far as Flight Simulator is concerned because I consider anything over 30 FPS playable with this game. Now when it comes to Red Dead Redemption 2, I will say this, the latest drivers do make things seem a lot smoother. In fact, they don't just make things seem a lot smoother, the game does run a lot smoother. This is the only game out of the ones I tested that actually threw up a driver version warning, saying that we didn't have the latest drivers installed when using a uh, the 16.8.1 drivers. Of course that warning didn't come up when using the latest recommended ones and with the Digital Foundry console settings we were seeing at least 30 FPS on average which held pretty steady as we rode through the busy town of Valentine. It also felt a lot less sort of, I don't know, um, yeah I'll say stuttery here. It felt a lot smoother overall and despite the frame times not being that bad with the first revision of the drivers as you'll see in a minute it just felt a lot smoother here plus I didn't get a black screen problem like I did with the older drivers we'll move on to them now so with 16.8.1 29 fps was the average so not quite getting 30 here and the 1% low was 26 so both of these percentile figures were a little lower than they were with the latest drivers and as I said before 
we did get a uh, driver warning flash up as well. Plus, we couldn't use Vulcan. I'm not sure when Vulcan support came in um, for this game, but trying to set uh, the game to Vulcan, it wouldn't do it. It just defaulted to DX12 every time. So I had to test the game with DX12 on both occasions just to keep things a bit fairer. Of course, the in-game benchmark here was used to measure performance because this one does have an inbuilt benchmark tool. I think to conclude, it's safe to say that you should probably keep your drivers up to date. Um, even if you don't see that much of a significant performance difference in some games, it will help to eliminate any problems that occur, such as with these older AMD drivers, whereby I was seeing a couple of black screens here and there that could only be resolved by turning the system off and on again. Now this is going to vary between graphics cards, and you may get a totally different result with an NVIDIA card, for example. You might see a slightly bigger or smaller performance gap with games um, with an NVIDIA card or with integrated Intel graphics. This is only one example. Nonetheless, this video was a product of my curiosity. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.